Welcome back. We're joined now by one guy that's starting to be kind of a, a regular here on Life Talk. You mentioned somebody said you ought to get your own Life Talk shirt. Maybe we'll have to get you. Have your I earned own. one yet? Yeah, maybe so. You've been here enough. It's great to be back in Texas. Yep, I'm sure that's true. Everybody's <laughs> trying to get to Texas. From the way Dallas Fort Worth is growing, that, that appears to be the truth. Listen, um, Troy, I wanted you to have, have you come in because we've talked about this over the, over the phone many times. You know, I, I've always said that you, you can't defeat an opponent unless you understand that opponent. You have to know who your opponent is and how they think and so forth. Sounds and, like Sun Tzu sort of thing. Yeah, that's, that exa that's exactly right. Um, and we've talked about the psychological makeup of these people. And, of course, you have your own kind of pet case that, that you moved to Wichita, Kansas, to go after George the, the Killer Tiller up there, who's probably the most notorious abortionist in the United States and does all these late-term abortions. Horrible. And, I mean, we're talking about near-term abortions. Oh, sure. On Tuesday mornings, we see women uh, that are fully, uh, full-term right. uh, pregnant and, and, and walking in to have an abortion. Right. We, what I want to talk about today, basically, is kind of the psychological makeup of these people. And when I wrote Line 5, I had a chapter in there called Vacant Souls mm -hmm. about some research that we had done about, uh, and, and some, getting most of the stuff that we got was from writings that they made. Sure. And they've written all these books, the moments on Maple Avenue and, and all this other stuff about what it's like inside the abortion industry and the way they think and so forth. And it's really macabre. I mean, it's, it's bizarre it is. Um, how these people look at things. And, you know, these are very injured people. They, they will never admit that to you, but these people are very psychologically injured. Yeah. And... Um, We've got a tape here in a minute that we're going to show, which is basically an orientation tape from George Tiller, as you know, and I know you've, you've right. seen it before. Um, this is the tape that he gives to women who come to Wichita to have late-term abortions. He, he makes them watch this tape, and then he picks it up from them the next day. And it was very difficult to get a copy of it. We were eventually able to get one. And um, it, it, the tape reveals a lot about George Tiller. We're just going to sh it's about an hour long, and it's one of the creepiest things it's heartless and cruel. And this guy is cold. Oh. But um, it really reveals a lot about George Tiller. Uh, let's take a look at that. Hello. I'm George Tiller. I'm Dr. Tiller. I'm the medical director of Women's Health Care Service here in Wichita, Kansas. And I'd like to thank you this morning for the opportunity to be helpful to you during this time of reproductive emotional and family crisis. As far as abortion services are concerned, I have performed over 60,000 terminations of pregnancy and our area of expertise and major interest is in late termination of pregnancy. For you, the patient, our most vital priority is to see that at the end of the situation here, you are physically and anatomically intact and on your way to emotional and spiritual recovery. Patients are smart enough to understand what's going on with them. Patients are tough enough to put up with the emotional pain of the decision. And patients are responsible enough to put up with the good results and the bad results that come from their decisions. Because it is the patients that must put up with the good results. The physician, not the physicians, not the nurses, not the health care workers. It is the patients that have to put up with the results. Let's make that even simpler. Doctors make decisions, doctors make diagnoses, patients make decisions. Physicians are counselors, or advisors, or trusted friends, or diagnosticians. We are not judges, we are not dictators. It is the doctors that make the diagnosis, it is the patients who make the decisions. The woman is the patient, the fetus is the problem. Our process is natural. We are going to help you have the premature delivery of a small stillborn under twilight anesthesia using nature's technique of labor and delivery. Women are built to have a 7 to 10 pound baby and we are going to help you have the premature delivery of a stillborn in most situations less than half the size of a full term delivery. Since our process is not allowed in any hospital, we occasionally have a delivery away from the center or at the hotel. Please remember that one size in medicine does not fit all and we are going to do our very best to modify our program so that you have a perfectly uncomplicated experience here with us in our premature delivery of a stillborn 
under twilight anesthesia. We are going to expect the best and prepare the worst to the end that when we finish with your premature delivery of a stillborn under twilight anesthesia, you are anatomically and physically intact and well on your way toward emotional and spiritual recovery. Troy, I mean, you watch that, you look like you're, you, you sound like you're, you're listening to, to Joseph Mengele, the angel of oh, death yeah. in the Nazi death camp. The cold, detached, heartless. unemotional. Absolutely heartless. Right. Um, but do you get the feeling, and, and I haven't talked to you about this, but do you get the feeling that what this tape was for was not to educate these women. This was George Tiller doing two things, rationalizing to himself what he does. Right and shifting the blame over to the woman. That's exactly it. The, the it, consistent theme in this deal is, the woman is the one who makes the decision. Right, right. Well, when I first got to Wichita, or prior to even moving there, I, he had a big banner out in front of his abortion clinic that said, uh, women will have abortions and I will do them. And I thought it was some sort of big arrogant statement that, you know, I'm right. gonna do abortions no matter what and you can't talk me out of it. But after viewing that tape, I thought it's more along the lines that women are going to have abortions anyway, so you might as well have a qualified physician like me to do it for you. Right. And he's emotionally detached himself completely from it. The woman gets all the blame. The, it's, the, the abortion is always her fault. Uh, we've had women coming out of the abortion clinic saying uh, that Tiller had said very derogatory things toward them. You know, you've got yourself in this mess. I'm just here to fix it. You better not come back here, but right. I'll probably see you again anyway, but right. you know, go along your way. It's passing the guilt off to her. Absolutely, it's blame shifting. And you know, the, the interesting thing is, when you, when you start looking at that tape, when you watch the whole thing, and it's just constantly this, I'm, not the, I'm just the mechanic. Right. They come in and tell me what to do, and I do it. Right. You, you, and then you go back, if you ever saw any of the Nuremberg trials, uh, the transcripts from those trials, right. you had these Nazis saying, when they were asked, how could you work in these death camps? Mm -hmm. Their argument, their standard argument was, I was just following rules, it was legal, right. I was following, the, that's what he says. Right. The other thing that they would say is, look, whether I worked in those camps or not, these, the same thing was going to happen to these Jews. If I hadn't done, done it, somebody else would have. Right. And that was their rationalization from being able to go into these death camps and torture people to death every day, was that, hey, if I don't do it, they're just going to get somebody else to do it. So the same thing's going to happen to the victim. You know, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just carrying out the will of other people. That's what Tiller is saying here. Yeah, that's it. And, and, you, and they have to emotionally disconnect themselves from the actual act. Sure. And it's almost like he's not even there at the abortion clinic. You know, when you view that tape, right. I, it's, it's somebody completely different. And he lives a, a compartmentalized life. He's got his abortion business, and then he's got the rest of his life. And I think that's the only way that these people can actually function. Psychologically. Psychologically in right. the abortion clinic. He's the, obviously a very unhappy person. I mean, you can tell that by watching this. He knows what he's doing. And you know what's interesting about this? Did you pick up on the fact that throughout this tape, and like I say it's about an hour long, mm -hmm. he consistently calls it a baby. All the time. It's a baby that he's killing. He mm -hmm. admits that. Absolutely. I wonder if in his own mind he ever thinks, wait a minute, I'm sitting here saying that I'm killing this baby. It was the first thing that I noticed that you said, he said it's a baby. I jumped up and said, stop the tape. Right. He said it was a baby. Rewind it. Right. But throughout the entire thing, he says it's a child. But then he comes up with this euphemism for abortion. He doesn't say abortion. This is, we're going to manage this pregnancy through an indu induced miscarriage. Right, right. Like it's no different than one that just happens. Well, he also uh, creates different levels of humanity. He, see, th this tape was originally, I think, designed for the woman who was coming in for a, a pregnancy uh, or a, a baby that uh, may possibly be suffering from some uh, birth defect mm -hmm. or something. And so it's, it, the, the children with, uh, say, a cleft palate are a lesser form of human being, and so they must be put to death. It's, it's like, as you were talking about earlier, a, a, a eugenic principle that he's putting into practice. Right, and, well, and, and that's no different than the Nazis. Yeah, no, no different. You know, they never denied that the, that the, the Jews and the, and the Slavs and the Catholics right. and all the other people they executed were humans. Right. They just weren't the same as... The Aryans. Yeah, they, they, and they, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't be procreating, and we need to purge ourselves of right. this blight on society. And uh, they really look at these eugenicists, like Tiller is, uh, really look at uh, these, these children as a blight and a, and, a, and a hindrance on society, and they need to be eradicated. You know, one of the um, 
things that you mentioned earlier is, is relates to something that I wrote about in line five, which was this issue of their view of the women they do abortions on. And that's really interesting. With all these women that we talk to that call in here that have been injured or that have had abortions, and you've mentioned it, they'll say these real derogatory things. You know, oh, yeah. if, you, if you kept your pants on, I wouldn't be in this situation. They blame the woman for the fact that they do abortions. And one of the things that we revealed, uh, we had a whole chapter in line five about the fact that women are commonly raped or sexually assaulted in abortion clinics. It's very common to mm -hmm. occur. But the nature of those sexual assaults was what was really interesting is they tended to be very punitive. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done as much for the sexual gratification of the abortionist as it was for him to punish her. That's right. And, Violent. Yeah. And it, it went to their view how, how they look at these women, and they literally, and I've had these women tell me this, that, that they have said to them, I am in this position. In other words, I'm an abortionist. I'm the scum of the earth uh -huh. because of you, because of your immoral and, and uh, uh, ungodly lifestyle. You've put me in this position. You've, it's blame shifting. They've, you're right. forcing me to kill your baby. I don't want to do this but I'm going to take your money and do it anyway. Right. But in the midst of it, I'm going to punish you for it, and I'm going to make you feel bad for it. Absolutely. And, you know, I've always had the view that when you look at people like Tiller, that at the, at the fundamental, at the, at the basis of it, they're cowards. Their victims are women and children. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in them, they realize that they're cowards. And I think that the, uh, one of the worst things to have to live your life, especially as a male, I think, would be to know that you're a coward. It'd be a horrible way to live your life knowing that, you, that that's how you are. And they, they have to do this blame shifting because they can't live with it themselves. That's why a lot of them are, are uh, abuse drugs, abuse right. alcohol, abuse women, uh, lead right. dysfunctional lifestyles. Uh, and you're talking about earlier, I mean, this whole discussion of a psychological makeup right. of the abortion industry is they're all going crazy. They they're, are. They're, they're hypocrites, they're liars, they're cowards, they're living a, a, a dual life. Uh, right. And, and, and they just can't do it for very long. And, and before uh, the end of the day, they're just all going to implode. And I think we're seeing that in the abortion we, industry We today. are seeing that. We're seeing more and more of that. And we're seeing more and more people inside the abortion industry coming out and starting to say these things openly. Right. They're openly writing things saying, yeah, there's a lot of weird, weirdness that goes on and a lot of dysfunction that goes on. Um, and they're starting to see that the thing is falling in on them. It's collapsing in. They're absolutely right. Thanks, Troy.